All right, so we talked a little bit about lists last week. If we bring up a little command line here, we can remember that a list is going to use brackets and we can use anything inside of here, any data type can be inside. So for example, if we have a string, such as the word style, we can have dog, we can have numbers, in this case, integers, or we could have floating points, something like that. And we can even have lists inside of here. So we could have cat, dog in here as well. And so on this outer list, you can see this big outer list. We have these different variables inside. We even have an inner list inside of here. And does anybody kind of remember what these individual variables are called when they're inside of a list? They're typically referred to as items. So each one of these are an items. And the key with a list is that these are indexes. So if you'll remember, spam, this is the first index, then the second, third, fourth, et cetera. So when you want to call cat, cat and dog is one index, right? Yes, this is still one spot. So if we wanted to pull out cat and dog that were in that inner list, then we would use something like spam zero, one, two, three, four. So we would go four and that would get us this outside list or this inner list that we have here. Another way of doing that would be spam negative one so that we could get the last one in the list. So these would end up giving us the same answer um, regardless of what we have up here. All right, the reason I go back and talk about that is this week we're talking about dictionaries, which do not have an ordered list or, or an ordered index per se. So the indexes for dictionaries are a little bit different. They cannot just be integers. Remember, these are the integer numbers for the index that's up here. In dictionaries, we use what's called a key value pair. So we have keys and then we have the values that are associated with them. So to start, we would have something like my cat as a variable, and we're going to use squiggly brackets up here in order to denote that this is going to be a dictionary. And instead of an index, we can specifically state what we want in here for a key value. So for example, this key is going to be our size, and we can have a value of fat. We can have a key value of color. And we can have one of disposition. Okay. So there's a couple things with dictionaries. You can run this out as one long line, as you can see here on the screen what they did. You can also do those as comma separated, just like you could with uh, lists. So lists, this is another way to represent lists, which is kind of nice. It makes it easier to see. And you can denote what's inside of there. Um, in this case, it makes it much easier to see the key value pair. So everything on the left over here are keys. The value, things over here on the right are our values. So instead of having to call, say, my cat zero in order to get something out, we can simply say my cat and pass in the actual key that we want. So if we want the size of that cat coming back, we would get back the answer of fat. Fat would come back here. If we had something like my cat, in the color, that would return gray outside of here. So it's much easier to use because you're using indexes in a way that are not numbers, but actual representation of what you want. So this could be strings, this could be numbers, it could be anything relative on the key side. Um, and it makes it much, much easier to, to go through. So for example, in this spam down here, you can still use integers. So for example, if we used one, two, three, four, five, that would have a value of luggage combination as a string. 42, we would get back a string that would be called the answer. So the main things as you're working through here, if you have spam equals and then this particular list, notice it's cats, dogs, moose, then we have bacon, which has the same values per se, but they're in a different order. You'll notice that spam does not equal bacon, and that's because these are in an ordered fashion. 
in a dictionary, there is no particular order. In other words, if we have eggs equal name equals Sophie, species equals cat, age equals eight, and we mix those around, those two dictionaries are going to be identical to one another, even if they're not in the same order, because there is no order to a dictionary. There's no first item. Does everybody kind of see how that works? And as such, there can't be sliced like they can with lists because there's no ordered way of pulling information out of a dictionary. So you gain the advantage of being able to define what you want for keys, but you don't have any order to the actual overall um, array, so to speak. You're, you're just being able to um, reference those by these inside of here. So to call those, again, it's very similar here, span, we put square brackets, we put a whatever index we want to get back out of it. And for a dictionary, we use square bracket to pull back whatever value we want. Notice when you're defining a dictionary, you are using squiggly brackets up here as well. All right. If you try to pull back a value that doesn't exist, so say I said something like my cat, and give me back the grade of my cat, you would end up with an error here, which would be our key error. And this would allow you to check to see whether or not that key exists inside of here. So you could use a try and accept on there to see if you're getting back a specific key type error. All right, another way of going through and checking in a dictionary, which is really handy, if we look at this code here, we can see we have birthdays with a dictionary. And this is a great example of a dictionary because we have a person and then we can define the date on here. Um, we can also set a bunch of other characteristics to come back if we wanted to. Um, this would be better than having something like birthdays as a list and then listing April 1st, December 2nd, March 4th. We don't know who that exactly ties to. So dictionaries give us that value to tie that back to somebody of some value, giving us that key value pair. So in this code, we're going to go through and we're going to gather a name and we're going to check to see if that name is in birthdays. Now, when we call birthdays in this fashion, what it does is it returns all of these individual keys, in this case, Alice, Bob and Carol, and finds out whether the name you typed in are actually inside of that, that list of keys. Um, if it is in there, then we'll go ahead and print to the user that that one already has a birthday of something. And if not, we'll give them a chance to go ahead and add that information up to the dictionary. So when we set things to a dictionary, for example, I want to say my cat and grade, just like the one I typed up here, I would say equals and we could put, um, say, a B. That would define this key over here with the grade, and then we would set the value side of this over to a B. So this is how you can add things to a dictionary. Does anybody remember the different ways to add those in a list? We have the option of um, specifying which index we want to put that in. So we would say something like my spam four equals something. We could use dot append method, which would allow us to add it to the end of the list. And we could also use the insert method, which allow us to put it at a very specific index um, where we want that in the list. So there's a lot uh, of some. Is, is there an option to do like dot add? No. No. No, in this case, you would just define what you want for a key and then specify the value that you want to put inside of there. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, there is an option of ordered dictionaries within Python 3.7. This is again a new thing that came out. Um, what you can do is specify uh, a list of eggs and it's going to return, like I mentioned here before, you would get back all of the uh, keys out of there and then you could go ahead and sort that if you wanted to and then return those values if you wanted to do that. So that's one way of bringing that out, but you kind of have to work with them together. They're not integer based access like what we talked about in the past. So when we're working with dictionaries, as we said before, if you want to pull back all the keys out of, say, this dictionary I have here, what we would call on is mycat.keys. And that would return all of the keys, in this case, size, color, and disposition, and return it into a list-like object. It's actually defined as a um, dict keys is what's 
the data type in here. Now it looks a lot like a list um, and it functions a little bit like a list and you can use it in for loops. So I could say something like for key in mycat.keys print that key and that would end up printing out size, color and disposition on each individual line there. So that's, that's kind of nice and, and pretty handy to go through there. Um, you could also do this with dot values. So say I wanted to print out the fat, gray, and loud, we would use dot values. And this we could change over here. So it's a little more relevant. We could say the value and we could print the value instead of here. And so this time when it executes this code, it would print out fat, gray, and loud each on its own individual line. If you wanted to work with both of these pieces of information, for example, we wanted to print this out cleanly, we could do something like for k comma v, which is pretty common, meaning that k is gonna be our key, v is going to be our value. We would use a dot items method. And what this is gonna return is a tuple. So we will get back a key value tuple that looks something like this size. And we would get a tuple back of fat. So when we run this, you are gonna get this little tuple back. And then that means that we can define how we wanna print those out. So we could do something like print our K like this plus, and then we could put a colon in there plus our value. And that would use some string concatenation in order to print that out so that it actually looks like this printed out on the screen. And that's pretty common um, when you're working with those, you may wanna work those. Now you can define these as however you want. You know, I can assign this A, B if I wanted to. And then I just use those variable names down here in the given places. But it's important when you're working in Python that you make sure that you use variable names that actually have some relevance. So by using K comma V, that's a little easier for us to remember that the K is our key value and our V is our value that's coming out of there. So you again have three methods when working with dictionaries. You have dot keys, you have dot values, and you have dot items. Um, keys are going to return a list-like object. Values are going to return back a list-like object, and items are going to return back a list of tuples throughout their. All right. <clears throat> So again, you're gonna get something that looks a lot like a list. If you wanna do more things with that list, you need to convert whatever comes back out of there using the list function. So for example, if you're gonna do more than just a simple for loop through that, you would be better to go ahead and return a specific list of all those in there. So we could say something like my keys equals the list of my cat dot keys like this, and that would make my keys, this variable over here, a actual list-like object so that we could do things that we would normally do with a list. And that gets to be pretty handy if you're trying to deal with all the different uh, keys that come out of this dictionary and values. What's great about, again, a dictionary is you can treat it a lot like a mini database. So for those of you that have ever worked with any kind of databases, you typically have this key value type situation which makes that much nicer in order to recall data, store data, et cetera, um, versus a list where you have to know what index you're working with, et cetera. There's a whole lot more um, mystery as to what's going on there, where with a dictionary, you can treat it a lot like a very mini database. So for some of you that are working on your midterm projects or, or starting to consider those, you may want to use dictionaries in order to kind of store information, um, which makes it easily attributable so that we can define something like size is fat versus knowing that the first index is the size and the second index is color and the third index is disposition. You might remember that multiple assignment trick. So we would have something like size, color, disposition equals say my cats. And if my cats was equal to my cats is a list that is fat, gray. So we would use this multiple assignment trick in order to assign these variables 
but now I have each one of these as variables in my overall script. So every time I referenced um, fat or reference size, color, and disposition, I would get back these values. It's much easier for us to just call dot keys and get a list of all those, and we can call dot values and pull those out there. There's certainly places for lists. Um, as a matter of fact, like I told you before, they're the most common data type that, that really gets worked in there next to strings. Um, but there's some huge advantages for dictionaries overall. All right, we talked a little bit about um, using like if statements to check to see if something's in there. In this case, we can use our in and not in operators in order to see if something exists. So we can have a list, um, or I'm sorry, a dictionary here. We can check to see if name is in our spam.keys and we would get back true. If we wanted to check to see if Zofi was in our values, we could check to see if a color was in there and we get true and false. This makes it much easier for us to go through and uh, check to see what's actually in there. Um, notice this last one here when we say color and spam. If we don't specify a method, it's going to assume that we want the keys back. So um, if we just say color and spam up here, it's the same as checking this one here where color and spam keys, you get the same result. Okay. Um, again, if we wanna return a specific value out of here, we just simply call it back. So if I look at my cat here, I could say, give me back the color. And this would return gray back to my screen. So if I told it to print this, that's what I would get back on the screen is the word gray. Sometimes it's nice to go and check to see whether a key exists. And if it doesn't, go ahead and return us a value. That's where we use the dot get method. So for example, if we look at this dictionary here of picnic items, we have apples as our key, cups as our key. We have five as a value and two as a value. In this string, we can say, I am bringing the string of picnic items.get. What this is doing is saying, go ahead and get me the value for cups. And if there is no value, we're going to say zero. It's gonna return a default value back to the user. That keeps us from having to do if cups in uh, picnic items.keys, then return whatever picnic items.key is, else return that. This is basically a quick way of doing that if else statement. So we could check to see if cups exists. If it does, go ahead and return this number two, which is what you can see happens here. If that does not exist, give us zero. So for example, if we check to see if eggs is up here in our keys from our dictionary, eggs is not in there, therefore it's gonna return zero on the egg side. So dot get is in order to check to see if something is in there. If it is not, return a default value back. Um, or, or return a value back that we specify, which is slightly different than the set default method. So set default is very similar to us saying, okay, here's our dictionary, name, puka, age five. If color is not in spam, in other words, if color is not in our keys, which it is not, then state that spam color is now equal to black. So you are actually setting that value now to your dictionary so that you have that value moving forward. So that is what the set default method does. If we call spam.setDefault color black, if color does not exist as a key, then we're going to actually specify color as black and it will return black in our uh, return statement coming out of set default. You will wanna pay attention to this .get and .setDefault. Um, that is going to be important for the midterm as it's asking you how you specify these and why you would specify these. Again, dot get is going to check if something's there. If it's not in there, we're going to return a value that we specify it. Set default is going to check if something's in there. If it's not, we're going to actually specify that key moving forward inside of our dictionary. And then we will also return that value back. This one does not state anything. It does not modify this picnic items. This one will modify whatever dictionary that you give it. All right, so as we have a big long list of say dictionaries, so I'm gonna take this out here. And if I say print my cat, and then we run this little simple one here. 
you'll see when it prints to the screen, we print it out just like we would expect it to. It looks like the dictionary. We don't want to print things like this on the screen to a user. We want to make sure that we print it in a nice, clean fashion. So the first way that we talked about before was to do something like a for loop. So if we say 4k comma v in my cat dot items, we would say print k, do string concatenation to give us a colon, string concatenation to print the value, and then we can go ahead and run this. Let's see. Okay, you can see that this is much cleaner when we print this out on the screen. Um, but we have to do this little for loop in order to do that. Dictionaries have a nice way of printing these dictionary values nice and cleanly, nice and pretty. And so what we can do is we can import pretty print. So import pp print. And then instead of going through this, we could say pp print, uh, pp print. We're going to use that uh, function out of this module. We're going to just pass in like that. And now if we run this, you'll see it still prints it in a very similar fashion that we had up above. Notice that the order is all switched around to where these are actually in um, kind of an ordered way. So you have color, disposition, size. Or before when it printed it, it had size, color, disposition. Um, so it's a little bit ordered in that fashion and it's a little bit cleaner, but you can actually get it much cleaner when we go to print that out. So say you had a really long dictionary and a bunch of messages in there, such as this one here, you can use pretty print in order to get that out. You can also use the pretty print PF format in order to get a nice clean string as it goes through there. So we could use the P format. And if we run this version, um, uh, yeah, we still have to print it overall, sorry. This just formats it, and then we need to print what returns out of there. And you can see that it prints very similar in this case. Now, this is the way it does it in the idle shell. Um, pretty print is useful for if you have a really long one or if you have nested uh, dictionaries or lists within a bunch of information there. So if we had a bunch of things in here, for example, we said um, our, uh, let's say my list is a string and we're gonna give it a value of a bunch of other items. So cat, dog, elephant. Oh, you got to have a comma up here off this line. So every one of these always have to end with a comma. Okay, so you can see here because we did P format and I actually had this my list out, it printed it in a nice easy fashion. Part of that has to do with there wasn't very many keys and values in this particular list or in this particular line as it went across here. Um, so for example, if I take this off and I say just print my cat, you can see that it just kind of runs off the screen and it's really hard to see those overall values inside of there. But if you do it either with pretty print I'm on a different keyboard here today, pretty print, pretty print. You can see that it's going to make it nice and clean and print it down so that we can easily see all our keys in this column and all of our values in this right column. It's just a rough way for you to see data. I would prefer that you still not use this in your projects to print out any kind of dictionary. Um, think of it more as a debug um, way of testing to see what's currently in your dictionary. Um, because you notice that it's not very clean in order to print this out. You still have the asterisks, you still have these lists or that kind of stuff. So what you would want to do is build out some kind of for loop to really kind of make that nice and clean. So we could say something like 4k comma v in my cat 
dot items. Then we can use our print statement. We could say our K value. And we're going to get this. We'll describe this a little bit more coming up here in the near future. But we're going to use slash T in order to tab separate what's coming in here. In this case, we're going to use a colon. We're going to use two tabs so that we have plenty of room. And then we'll print the V value. If we look at the output of what this little program will do, whoops. Um, and because we have a string that can come in there, we can't end up concatenate that. So what we would have to do is, um, uh, well, for the time being, because we have this inner list, let's just take this line out. So you can see what I was going for here. There you go. So you can see that these all go in there. Now, this obviously doesn't quite line up. So if we just go to one tab, we can see what that looks like. Um, but it still doesn't quite line up there. We will have a way of making sure that those line up and print out nice and clean here coming up within the next couple of weeks. We'll actually have a way of adjusting that so that we can make sure that's clean. So when you're working with dictionaries, you want to take advantage of pretty print in order to print out what this dictionary is so that you know what's in it at a specific point in time. In other words, for debugging purposes, but you don't want to use it to print all the values to the user. You would you want to use some nice for loop in order to display that data. You may not necessarily want all the information, all the keys and the values. You may just want the keys. So for in that case, if we just say keys and we have all of our nice keys here, then we could just simply tell it to print the key. And you may want to do something like for this, you could come back here and say print the following. And then when this prints out to the user, you get a nice clean printout. Just keys, 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 for the keys. There you go. You'll have something that goes like this. All the keys described the individual user. All right. Um, when you're working with dictionaries, this is a really good project this week to fully understand how dictionaries work. For example, if you're working with a chess game or something, you have some nice coordinates that go through here. So for example, if you go over here, you have G and you go up, you have five, G5. We can specify those in a dictionary. So we can say which is going up. For example, if we want to build a tic-tac-toe board, we can say this upper left is top left top medium or top middle, top right, then we can specify those as a board in a dictionary. So if we say the board is our dictionary, we have top left, and these are all blank. And then as you get information in from the user, whether they wanna put an X or an O, we can go back and set that particular variable here so that when we print that back out to the user, they would actually see a nice tic-tac-toe board of this type of description. So this is a really good project to kind of understand how to work with dictionaries. I encourage you to go through and play with it. Um, this here is gonna show you how to work with nested dictionaries and lists. Um, it kind of goes back to that picnic items thing that we talked about before. Um, this is a good one to study on. And let's see here, there was another one that I used to have as homework for people. Looks like it's changed a little bit that's in there. Um, this one here is a good one for those of you that are particularly looking at building um, text adventure games for your midterm. Um, focus on this. This is going to be your whole inventory type system. Um, and it's really good because you're going to be reusing this code in your midterm or something very similar to it um, so that you can display an inventory. So, for example, in this case, we have what was normally a list of all the different things that would be in their inventory. If we have a function that defines that, but then we have all this information that's in there by default, we can easily print this out to a user telling them what's in there. This is a generic form of it, but a lot of students like to do text adventure games. You would find this useful in order to fully understand what a dictionary is. So key takeaways from today, um, the dictionary is another data type, just like list, string, integer, 
um, floating point, et cetera. Those are all data types. There are no indexes for dictionaries. You can use multiple different data types, not just integers. So in this case, we call our indexes keys, and those keys have an associated value for that key value pair. This is one thing that you'll wanna note for the quiz that's coming up here. So fully understand that we have key value pairs in dictionaries. Dictionaries are noted by curly braces or curly brackets. They're sometimes referred to as, um, and you can see those here. Um, remember the main differences between dictionary and lists is that dictionaries are unordered. Um, therefore, if you try to match these two together, they're going to be true, where if these ordered lists are tested, they're going to return back a false. Um, if it doesn't exist, you're going to get a key error message instead of a index error message that you would get with a list. Um, you can check to see if something is in the um, dictionary and it's going to check keys by default. So for example, if I say if the name in birthdays, it's going to check all these names to see if something actually exists in there. We have three methods, unlike list, which if you guys remember had a bunch of them. Um, there's only three main ones with a dictionary. We have keys, values, and items. Keys will get us back all the keys, values getting us back all the values. Those both return what is called a dict keys or dict values um, data type. They're not a list. They look like list, um, but they're not a list. If you want to modify those and use them as a list, you will need to put them inside the list function so that it fully converts them to a list. In other words, you can use them in a for loop, but if you try to change anything or modify or print some stuff out, you more than likely need to convert those over to a true list. Um, for example, you can't add dot append, you can't do dot insert, you can't do any of that kind of stuff as they're not true lists. The dot items is going to return back a tuple of the key and the value. You want to remember when we talked about that in here, if I do dot values, in this case dot items, if I only say for key and dot items, I'm going to get an error. So for example, let me print this here. It's going to print and it's only going to print this key that comes out. But notice the key that comes out is the tuple. So if you want to use the uh, multiple assignment trick, in this case, we have key comma value. Now we are assigning this tuple to these individual names. So when I print the key, I'm only going to get the key out of it. And therefore, I will only see size, color, and disposition. So you get a tuple out of items and you can use the multiple assignment trick in order to assign um, variable names to the tuples that come back out of there. That will be on the quiz. So you'll wanna be familiar with that. Um, you have the dot get method that allows you to go through and get a value out of a dictionary. If it does not exist, then we're gonna return a value that we specify. Um, we have the set default method, which is different in that it's going to check if something exists in the dictionary. If it does not, we're going to define it in the dictionary and then return that same value back to the screen. All right. Does anybody have any questions today over that material? 